Okay, so now that I got these layers put in, so there's the, the foam, right, the cellulose clay, and then the coarse pumice gel to build up some of these sand layers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this this forward part. I want more of a sandy beach here with layers. Like I don't want to like I want just a textured area to paint and to feature here on this entryway, and then I want a bit of a man-made reef where this undercut here uh, shows more. So. That's the way it is on the prototype all along the Fraser here on Anastas Island. There's only reef, man-made reef sections where people deemed it uh, necessary. So, and there's already quite a bit of rock work already. And this particular scene, I don't want to dominate it with a bunch of rock. I, I actually want more of a beach here and then tall grass up to the railway tracks and then the brewery. So, and then you can see just from this photo, if I can just pan up here for you. This is standing at this spot, but further back, there's this man-made reef. It's just a short section here, but I'm moving this idea further down because the barge slips way down here. And obviously the barge slip on the model is right here, right? So that's why I'm going to cheat this section down with artistic license, move it down more, and then I'll taper it with smaller stone down here as I'm sort of shrinking the profile to force a little more distance and perspective, okay? And then I'm gonna lay in my larger rocks that you see here. Um, and then I'm gonna lay in some of the smaller stuff. It's just crushed granite, just sifted different sizes, but I'm gonna lay this all in dry and then I can move it around and then compose it and shape it and then move it around as I like it dry. And then I'm just gonna soak it down with matte medium first and then use uh, aluminum oxide sand I'll show you that too where I can fill it in and soak it down and just it just makes it a lot easier than pushing it into clay and trying to arrange individual stones and so on you can actually lay in each layer like you would uh, you know in the real world so to speak right you can just move it around and be and more control about how you want to compose some of this stone because you know let's face it we don't just throw it in place and glue it in place we want to stand back and look at it and try to make sense with it right like here you can see the larger stones are pushed up more against the bank here and then i want to have smaller stones and then sand down here to this green line right here okay Um, so you can see how I've uh, laid in the larger and then some mid-sized one and then a little bit finer down below. And then when I soak it down, it'll settle in more. And then when I dribble in some uh, diluted 50-50 matte medium, then it'll seal it all up. Sorry, uh, it'll seal it up all really nice. And then I'll come in later with uh, oxide sand and clean things up a bit more and and maybe work this area just a little bit more. Okay, so I can live with this now, okay, uh, as a layer that I can work with. 
And uh, what I'm going to do is I just take some water, and in this case there's probably 10%, uh, 99% alcohol, but only 10%, you know, like uh, one, one tenth, like water. You know, 10 or 15% alcohol. Actually, you only really need, um, you only really need 5%. Anyway, it just helps to uh, break the surface tension. So I'm just going to soak that down. Now remember, once this layer is dry, I can fill in because the water will cause some of the lighter gravel to settle. Okay. And then I'm just going to dribble on some of this. So I just, or, uh, matte medium 50-50, which is just a glue, right? It's an emulsion, acrylic emulsion, for those of you that aren't familiar with it. And it's fantastic because it dries flat, clear, right? It goes on like milk. And it dries really hard. Well, it's got a rubbery, like you can actually move it, like you can actually peel some of these rocks away, like later. Yeah. I apply all the ground medium this way. So that's what I'll do. So I'll just let this coat settle in and then uh, I'll probably give it another coat later. But I'm going to let that dry, okay? Okay, so here's some of the aluminum oxide abrasive, which is really like a scale HO uh, sand, really. And I've laid a little bit in here, so I'll just show you what I'm going to do. I'm just going to lay a little bit on like this over top of this and then I'm not going to cover up all that detail but I'm just going to work this sand into it a bit so there's a little bit of a rough I want to create a little bit of a roughness uh, if I could just show you a photo quick okay so this stuff is so nice to move around with a dry brush it just settles into everything nicely and leaves a beautiful sandy texture. So you can still see the edge work there nice. This is a little bit different than what I did before, but you know how it is we can evolve and change up our methods, right? Just depends uh, on the situation. Um, there may be some sand up here, but I'll work it down some. And then there'll be maybe uh, heavier soils up top. Okay, so I'm going to fix this in place. I'm happy with the dry arrangement of the sand now. The rock is fixed, as I say, and then I added in the loose smaller finer gravel and behind and then there's super fine sand at the front and what I'm going to do is to soak it down with water with about 10% volume isopropyl alcohol this helps penetrate I'll wet it all down once again so you know we'll have a look at this after it dries to see what it looks like and then we can tweak it all right I'm not that worried about what I don't cover here because this cell clay is porous and when it's painted when you overspray it with earth as I've shown before it just looks like part of the earth but a different texture and that's what you want like part of the key to doing realistic scenery is is the varied textures in the terrain because that's what we're used to seeing right so if we see it in a model well then 
it fills the gap. Our imagination does the rest. It tricks us into thinking it's real because our imagination is so powerful. It says, oh yeah, I've seen that before. Wow, that's neat. And even stuff that's not there, we see in the theater of our mind, right? So that's the, you know, the idea is we prompt our, our imagination to stimulate itself into what we already see and take for granted every day, right? When we look at scenery. So, like doing an undercut riverbank, like this is, like, wouldn't you prefer to do this rather than just to have a slope and then just a river? But doesn't it make sense to do this zone, to model this zone like this? I mean, that's what we're used to seeing, right? So if you take the time, like, you know, like if you're building a, modeling a 20-foot run or a massive layer, you're not going to, right? Like, like, what's the difference? Like, you know, you're just going to sprinkle a bunch of sawdust and whatever and get on with it, right? That's fine if you want to do that. But if you model a smaller layout, you get to spend more time with layers. And uh, you create a scene that looks more realistic and it's going to feel large. That's what happens. You know, the scene feels large, right? So this is just dirt, right? This is free. So I don't care how much I use. I'm going to sweep the excess off and vacuum up uh, what I don't use. And uh, it doesn't cost me anything but, but a beautiful day in the sun. And a nice hike, I might see something that will inspire me as well. Right? Mother Nature provides the best scenery. Yeah, I'll use foam or... Actually, I like to get... I'm running low on knock leaves. If anybody knows where to get knock leaves, please let me know. Because I really want to get my hands on those flat, tight leaves. They're really nice because that's what I want to use for the trees along this bank. So I'm not going to spray glue on this. Why? Because I don't want to set all this soil in place here. Otherwise that'll get glued down. And I don't want that there. So I'm just going to let that set. Right? And then I'm going to vacuum it up so it's clean. And then I'll do another layer. If you if you rush too much, just let me move the camera a bit here. If you rush too much, then it's going to look rushed. No amount of little bushes and trees will change that. Spend time. I mean, how much time do we spend, uh, you know, with the things that we love? Uh, do we spend this kind of time with them? Do we think about those people in detail as well? It should work both ways, right? You know, if I get, like, Somebody asked, like, how much time I do work. Like, I only do one or two hours here and there. But I rehearse it all. So that when I do do it, I'm set up and it's efficient, you know. Like, what you see right here with the clay and the foam, like, all of this, all the way down to the end there and, and to here so far is about, I'd say, five hours, four hours, if that. Right? Like, being with it, like, you know. So... That's pretty good, right? But I didn't do it in one five-hour stretch, though. I thought about it. I took breaks. I worked for half an hour, did a little bit. Like this beach scene right here, I'm going to tweak this a bit more. But I'm pretty happy with the rock seat on the edge there. Like, I'm pretty happy with that part, the way it's sort of random. It has a... That's moving it around dry. Remember how I showed that? And then setting it in place with wet on wet. Water and then glue. But I'm not going to wet on wet... Uh, this this is dry on wet okay and then i'll vacuum it off clean it all up and then stand back and look at it again and say okay what next you know deal with some of this but this is a lot of this edge work is going to be airbrushed soil the same color see and then i'll probably use tufts i might even try just some strips or just going to try some straight static grass on here because i want to uh this area right here i actually want to uh have a big field of grass here with a bit of a, like almost a game trail down to here. I'm, 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 I'm really thinking on that right now. Like a kind of a game trail, kind of down to the riverbank here. And then up 